Hi, I'm Henry, and today I'm going to be painting uh, the Sherman by Warlord. I, it's already been assembled, it's already been primed, but today I'm going to be airbrushing it. So, I found this book, and to do a little research on how I'm going to paint my tank, and I found a pretty good picture of one. It looks kind of like the one I have, um, and... I, I don't know what it is, but I like the yellow more than the green, and, I, and it's not, like, completely historic, but I think these people did a pretty good job of uh, restoring it. So we looked at some pictures from the book, and I selected this color that looks kind of like it. It is Vallejo Dark Green. And real quick, I'm going to show you how we uh, shake our paint. So we shake our paint uh, usually with, like, a nail polish shaker, but we... My dad put this like little ball inside of it and it's stainless steel. Most people put glass in because they're afraid of it rusting. But we're gonna put this thing inside the nail polish shaker. Let that go for a couple minutes. Uh, so we have this thinner here and I'm gonna use this to make our airbrush paint more like milk because you want it to be thick and not thin and because of that i like to use a syringer so i can get just the right amount into that little cup this little cup right here so i'm gonna test my paint and see if my color is like the way i wanted it to be Looks like it, yeah. That's kind of what I was going for. I'm just gonna. So we like to use a lazy Susan to spin our stuff around, so like we can get it all mixed up. We don't like miss anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and spin. Pretty close to the primer. Here's another little trick for you. Here I have some poster tack on a little popsicle stick. And I'm gonna, instead of putting it on a Lazy Susan, I'm gonna put it under, I'm gonna put this tack under the turret so I can spin it around and do it with my hands. You wanna like straighten it up a little bit. So I'm gonna, a little bit too much. I'm gonna just get a little, coat right here that should do it so our primer was super shiny and we airbrushed it with a bit of a darker color and we got that shine fixed and what I'm gonna do now is a lot of battle damage so if you have like any type of like foam, like just spare foam, they come a lot in the uh, like those like packages up there, like uh, blister packs. Yeah, blister packs. Um, you can you can don't throw that away. You can like rip some of that off. If you put some silver paint on here and just like ever so slightly, I'm not gonna do it right now, but ever so slightly, like it makes it look like bushes and trees have been like brushing against it so what i've done to this sherman here is weather it up with steel like a steely paint and i just went across all the edges and made it so like it looked like uh like every it give it makes the tank have a lot more character and it makes it so like uh see like trees bushes plants but like rub up against it and take off the paint you don't have to do this if you want your tank to be like brand new and uh you don't have to do this either i put like a big uh crater bullet there so i did not use uh one paint for these treads i used uh that. it was a uh, dark stone and uh next necromancer cloak that made a pretty good, like, brown, grayish brownish, which is really good for your treads. And I just, like, painted them all around, and I think it looks pretty good. So we have some Pioneer tools here. 
And I'm gonna paint those with just like a quick brown little like uh, silver right there. I'm not sure what that is, and I think I'm just gonna paint paint it brown. And I have this axe, and we're also gonna paint that brown. So the Pioneer tools, I, I mean. We're pretty simple. All you had to do was just put a little brown right there, put a little silver right there. I'm not sure what that was, but it looked pretty simple. So I just put up wood, wood, silver, silver. And then the axe, yeah, I just put a little bit of red on there because that's what most axes look like. A little silver at the tip and a little silver right there to hold it. So I put this blue headlight here. And you might be wondering why I painted it blue, and that's just because it makes it look kind of like cartoony and fun, like G.I. Joe-ish. But I think it just adds a little bit of character to the tank. We also did it right here with the lights. So this blue headlight we put here just to add like a little bit more of like uh, character. We're going to take this little bit of like wire that we found, and we have this white paint right here. It doesn't really matter how much you put in. And just barely touch it and then you just like that and that that like adds like a little bit more character like if like the sun's in it if it's like a little bit more like a, like a flashlight's in it or something it'll like glare so i have a games work workshop uh dry right here it's uh gold fag brown and you're gonna take a little bit of this, just like usually it doesn't work right here with a dry. You just like kind of get it right there, and then you just like smear it on the paper towel. And it's good to try two of these, like we did, because you want to find the, like the like the texture that works for that tank that you have. And you just want to like uh, see. Take for example, right here. We didn't finish this. You just want to take a little bit. It, you you need barely anything. You just like barely like that, like that. So the dry brushing, what its main job is, is just to pick up the high spots. Like, uh, let me try and find one here, uh, right here, for example. We're gonna like uh, take this little like loopy thing. We already did this wire, but I'm just gonna barely like that. So I really want to talk a little bit more about dry brushing and like picking up paint. So I'm gonna, I picked up a little bit too much of this. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on the paper towel. Um, so you want to use the edge of your brush because um, that does like the certain area and not like, just like, look, like if you did like the whole thing in the brush, like the head, it would go like whoop, whoop, whoop. But if you do like, just like the side, it would just go like, like that. It's more like, precise than just doing the head so you just want to like and especially like the uh places where you did too much uh weathering all right we're gonna pick up a little bit more and we're just gonna barely like ah dang it put a little bit too much on that's fine Rub that out with your finger, huh? Yeah. All right. Picking up some of the edges of this panel, just like touching it. This is with the dry, right? Getting a little bit more. Yeah, this is the dry paint, orange. Just. Oh, whoops. That usually means you need to wipe your brush off a little more. Yeah. I'm just gonna barely nick it. So, but just by looking at this tank, you can tell it's not straight from the factory. It's taking quite a bit of beating. So we're gonna put some shell damage on right here and here. So we're so you have to put it like a little. Take your thumb tack. And just like barely make out the point that you're gonna use, like that. And then you're gonna take the other point right there. Now, of course, you can do these spots wherever you want. It is your tank. That one need a little bit more. 
There we go. Those are our starter spots right there and there. So we're going to take this drill bit. And you're not actually going to use the drill because that's too risky. You're going to use your hands and then just... So you're going to take this drill bit and then just twist it around. You want to make sure you get it into your dot because if so, your thing's going to dance around all over the place. And then you're going to have a Let's see what it looks like. Right there. All I right. think I want a little bit bigger hole because that blast zone I did with the silver is pretty big. Let's, of course, they explode. So we're going to put a little bit more of that. So we got our holes in with this drill bit I used. I mean, all we did was that I'm not actually going to do it. All we did was like put it in there and all we did was like do, 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 do. Same thing right there. You can put as many holes as you want to. I'm going to take my uh, modeling putty here and mix it up a little bit. And we're going to put it in those holes that we made. Remember that these holes are completely optional. You do not have to do it. I think once you get to the green color, you're good. So I'm going to smooth this over. And then I'm just going to... So you want to make sure the edges blend in first. Yeah. So I spread it out a little bit. So I put the putty in and smoothed it over. So now I'm going to take the paintbrush tip and make the crater. Yeah, you just jab it in there like you did with your... You just jab it in there like you did with your uh, drill bit. I think, I think that needs a little bit more. There we go. See this putty we put on too much, so we gotta remove that. So I'm just gonna take a little bit. Make sure you're not uh, scratching the tank. So I'm just gonna take that off. This would work better if you uh, had a X-Acto knife, but we're just using this uh, dentist tool. All right. So we're going to uh, wait for these to dry up, and we're going to go ahead and put our wash on. We're going to try and avoid the putty. Just, just like any old ordinary wash, you just try and uh, get the cracks in and uh, avoid that putty right there if you did put holes in your tank. And we're just going to do this. So here's our battle damage. I hit it with uh, corrosion, then I did uh, orange rust, and then I did uh, some uh, silver uh, metal. So this is my finished tank, and I'm really proud of the battle damage and all the weathering I did. And I hope you learned something from this and how to paint your tank. And I'm glad I didn't overdo it with the battle damage. I'm sure you could. And I'm really proud of this tank and how it looks. 